Okay, so in this tutorial, we're gonna be tackling this abstract animation. We're gonna be covering this loop. You'll see, you can see some volume back there. We're gonna be tackling that. If you wanna download the exact project file you're viewing right now, you can go and get that for a dollar on Gumroad. The guys on Patreon will be getting that for free. And if you wanna see that loop some more, you can head over to my Instagram. It's there, it loops endlessly. And you can go check that out as well as some of my other work. I post a lot of things. So let's get on with the tutorial. So we're gonna be using Blender 2.8 for this. So the first thing we're gonna add in here is a simple cylinder. Now, before you do anything, right here on Add Cylinder, take the vertices and just click three, and you got that. Now, very important, hit Tab to go into Edit Mode and click the little arrow, the Move icon, hold down Control, and move it to the top, thus making the anchor point here at the bottom. We really want that. Now, if you hit Tab right up here and go to Face Select, you can click that, and on the bottom, hold down Shift, click this bottom one, hit X, and click Faces, and we've deleted all that. So I'm gonna scale them down pretty far, just like that. And then we're gonna take the scale tool and we're gonna scale them up. This part doesn't matter, just scale them up quite a bit. And now you're good with that. Now, first thing we need to do is add some loop cuts to this guy. So what we can do is go to loop cut, click here in the middle, and on this dialog, just scale it up to you like how many loop cuts you got. So we're gonna go up to that about here. Now, let's make loop cuts go loop cuts go down this way and that's I think we we're gonna need we want them to be square so it looks like three is a good number here so just type in three on each side we're basically subdividing this guy but this is a much more accurate way to subdivide it because of the particles we're gonna be adding later we want to make sure it's completely even shading so now that we have this we're gonna move on to twisting him so let's go to the modifiers add modifier and click simple deform and we're gonna use twist, but change the axis to Z. And then we'll just put the angle all the way to 360. And now we have the shape this direction. Now what we gotta do is add a mesh, get a circle. Leave the circle there. We'll go back to our modifiers on this object and add the curve modifier. So we'll go and add object and click Bezier circle. And now he's st snapped here. Let's go and click on, I believe, looks like it's the Z axis. And then if you take your circle, you can scale him up, scale him down so he fits. So I'm just gonna leave it here. And then I'm gonna take the object and go back to the scale tool here and transform. And on the Z, we'll just scale it up till it meets the bottom there. And then we'll just click it till it just touches the edge. And now we have our object. So now we can work along with this. So let's go ahead and just show you quickly how this would animate. All we're going to do is rotate it on the Z axis, and that's how we get that animation. But first, let's add some particles. So I'm going to hit Shift A, and I'm going to go ahead and add a UV sphere, shade smooth, and I'm going to bring this guy, bring this guy right over here. Position doesn't matter; just keep him out of the way of where your camera will be in a little bit. So let's add a particle system. Add the particle system. Make it hair. On source, click vert so that particles are only on the edges of the vertices. And then click here on render, change it from path to object. On instance object, click that sphere, and now we have all of our spheres. You can see in some spots there are missing circles. So we're just gonna go up here on the number and bring that up till all those spots fill up. And now we don't have any missing pieces. Now we can go ahead and start animating. So let's hit the tilde key, go to the very top, I'm going to hit Shift A, add a camera, and we're just going to go back like that. And now we'll start animating. So right down here on end, I'm going to switch it to 80 frames. I'm going to bring my, uh, my timeline up here. And then in your edit on the preferences, right here in animation, right here where it says default interpolation, change it to linear because it's usually on Bezier. Now let's go and animate that. So we're just going to click the little keyframe here on the Z rotation, go to the very end, and then hit the right arrow to go to frame 181. We're doing that because there will be a duplicate frame if we don't. Now, let's do 360, 360 degrees, hit the keyframe, and now this guy loops perfectly. But now we have these spazzing out, size changing spheres. If you were to just render this out, that wouldn't be there. This is just a strange artifact. If you go back to your particle system and click regrow, that disappears, you won't have that problem. So now we have this animation. It's super cool, it's super abstract. Let's go ahead and start lighting it. So we're gonna be using the EV render engine. So go up here on the render engine and switch it to EV if you're not already there. And then right here, click on bloom, 
and sp screen space reflections and ambient occlusion. Now let's start to shade it. So we're going to hit Z and click rendered and our world brightness is at on gray. So we're just going to change that here and let's go ahead and start adding some lights. So we're going to add a point light. So we're going to add an area light to go right here in this area, just like that. And we'll have him point directly at our model. So we're just going to bring it up and then sort of do this. So we want it to give some nice lighting, we'll scale it up and then we'll bring up the brightness by quite a bit right about there. Now let's add a simple shader to everything. So on this, let's just make a metallic shader and make him a little bit darker. So now the middle has that metallic shader. Let's click on the sphere and add that same shader to it. This is the only shader we're really going to deal, deal with until we get to uh, until we get to volume. But first off, I want to go back to the modifiers here. I'm going to minimize everything so I can see what's going on. And I'm going to add a subdivision surface to just give some nice subdivision, just to give some nice subdivision to this middle object. So we'll click it twice and then shade smooth, just like that. So a viewport and then keep your render at one as well. So now we have a nice smooth object here to look at. So everything is nice and smooth. Now let's go ahead and start adding more lights. So we'll go back to rendering and we'll take this guy and we'll duplicate him over here. And then we're gonna bring him down. I want him to hit the back. So we're gonna go back here and we're gonna hit R twice to move the, the light. That's how I'm moving him. And I want it, him to hit right there. So you can see that line start dealing with the metallic shader. And then let's change it to a nice harsh red color, more orange. And then we'll bring up the brightness on that. Now we need to add some more even lighting here. So we're gonna be using an HDRI. If you don't have an HDRI, just go and go to HDRI Haven com and go over to the HDRIs and just pick one. They're all free. Pick any one you like. And then what you're going to do is go to the world settings on color, click environment texture, and then click open and navigate to the HDRI you downloaded. So now we have our HDRI placed in. You can see everything. I, what I like to do, just an easy hack, is I'm going to click a plane, bring him far down, and then just move him around, scale him up, and then we're just going to give him a black shader, bring it all the way down and then put the roughness at 10. So you'd have to actually type that in. And then right over here, we'll actually bring it down some more. So now we are working with this situation. Now the HDRI is far too bright. So we can go over to the world settings and give it say 0 0.4 on that. And now we have some cool lighting and we have it even, I said even lighting to even out those shadows so it's not too dark and unrecognizable. Now let's go ahead and add volume. So shift A, add a box. Whoops, I added a plane. Shift A, and we're gonna go and add a cube and have that cube scale up and fit the whole scene just like this. We wanna fit, maybe a little bigger. I'm gonna hit shift A and apply scale. Now let's go to shading here, up here on the shading tab. And I'm gonna click new and I'm gonna delete the principled and I'm gonna add principled volume. Plug the volume socket into the volume just like this. And we're gonna to go to the rendered view. And now we have some nice volume. Now I'm gonna take this area light and I'm gonna take it out of the scene. So I don't wanna be able to actually see where the light's being emitted from, but I do wanna have light being emitted. So I just don't wanna see that dot. And so you can see, kinda of see how you see the dot here. I like to keep it out of the camera. So let's go back to shading and let's start manipulating this volume to look kind of like smoke. And that's gonna be done here in the density. So we're gonna add a noise texture just like this. And we're gonna plug the noise texture into the density. And we're gonna see some fun stuff already start to happen. It's hard to recognize. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy and add a color ramp right here, just like that. Now, if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, it's free, just go to the add-ons and type in Node Wrangler. You can hit Control T, plug that in, and I'm gonna just change the object vector here. And then what you can do is you can take this color ramp and just slide it in and expound on that smoky look. I'm gonna bring the detail all the way up. I'm gonna bring the scale down so we can get more smoke. And then if you want to make less contrast in this smoke area, you can take the black portion and bring it up so you, now you can just get some nice smoke, so a less gray. Basically, if you bring the, the black all the way to white, 
you have all the volume all the way black you have those gaps and of course if you do the white all the way to the bottom you have none of the volume and then all of the volume so that's just playing with the black and white portions now we can go back and continue playing with our lights playing with the uh, brightness of them so I'm gonna give it 300 on our brightness I'm gonna make this other light over here more of a blue tint so bring them over here like that and if we press play we have a pretty cool animation that we're working with it's a little bit slow in my viewport but yeah this is what we are working with for our animation I think this HDR is still too bright I'm gonna give it 0 0.2 just like that give it a more moody lighting situation and now we have a really cool really abstract scene that you can have some fun with now I'm gonna show you how to export it here real quick hit on the click on the click on the little printer icon decide where you want to save it here change from PNG to FF MPEG video on encoding change it from MP from this to MP4 and on medium quality to perceptually lossless and then render and then render your animation so there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned some stuff and thank you for watching.